Hello and welcome to Quilt Addicts Anonymous. I'm Stephanie Sebbing. Today we're doing something that isn't exactly quilting, but whenever I do one of these videos, you guys love it. So we're gonna do it today. Um, so I have hated my bedroom for a long, long time. Um, when I moved into my house, I was in HGTV mode and I painted everything earth tones and my bedroom was painted yellow and I hate it with a passion now. It was before I sort of developed my sense of color that I use now when I'm deciding quilts. So literally, I only have one quilt that actually looks good in the bedroom with that color. I know you guys have had this problem because I've had people tell me that, you know, they need to repaint a bedroom to make their quilt match. So um, we had a, a little bit of an accident. My daughter had an accident in the bed. We thought our mattress cover was waterproof and it wasn't and so that kind of snowballed and so we ended up pulling everything out of the bedroom we pulled all of the bedroom furniture out i painted i chose a nice light neutral gray and i just love the way it's looking i still haven't painted the trim yet but what i'm going to show you in today's video oh and by the way my idea for the gray is because then i can put any quilt in there except for brown of course but i don't really use brown in my quilt so it's not a big deal, but I can put any quilt in there at any time and it will match and it will be lovely because that's a nice neutral background. So I'm very excited to have that. And then I also painted the bedroom furniture. So this furniture was my grandmother's and it actually I think was my aunt's before that. And then she and her husband moved back to Italy and that's where my family's from. Di Pasquale is my maiden name, if you didn't know that. And then it went to my grandmother and she used it until her death several years ago. And then it came to us and I've been wanting to paint it probably for at least five years now. And I finally got a chance to do it. And so I used Joanna Gaines chalk paint. I know if you've watched these videos, you know I love, love, love Annie Sloan, but I decided to give the Joanna Gaines Magnolia Home chalk paint a try. It is Kills makes it. And I never really thought of Kills as like a high-end paint brand, but I know it is a good stain blocker. Uh, brand. We used it as a primer when we painted a bunch of paneling in our home white to sort of modernize it from the dark 50s drab um, stain that was there and it blocked everything. So I decided to give it a try and I of course filmed it and we're doing it a little bit different today. Um, I've actually already painted everything. It's done. So I'm going to kind of talk you through it and we're going to insert clips of me working on it so you can see what I did so you guys can repeat it step by step. If you have something that you want to upcycle in your home. I did this hutch behind me. I know you guys love it. We've That was our first painting video that we ever did that you guys loved. And I just like it because it gives like a dated piece of furniture a new life. And it's just great. I love it. And I'm so excited at the way it looks and that it can be used now for many more generations because we've modernized the look of it. I love it. I know there are purists out there who are going to say I shouldn't have done this. And you know what? It's an opinion and it's a piece of furniture and I love it. And I'm going to continue to use it and it's going to be a family piece. So that's okay. You can have your opinion. But if you're looking to maybe paint something, then check this out. I do this with sewing cabinets all the time too. By the way, I've got quite the collection. It's embarrassing. Maybe we'll do a video on my collection of antique sewing machines and cabinets someday, which means I'm going to have to count how many there are. And it's a lot. And I don't know that I want to know that number, but we'll figure it out. So anyway, let's get into it. I'll show you how I transform this into, I think 1970s is when it was built into something that's more modernized and is going to fit with my more modern bedroom and all my modern quilts and fabrics that will go in there. Let's get started. So the first thing I did was I got some Elmer's wood filler and I filled in the areas where there were scrapes and scratches. This is at least a 40 year old piece of furniture. It arrived to me with a bunch of scrapes and scratches. And then there also were a bunch of scratches on the rim of it. And I don't remember if that was before it came to me or if maybe the dogs got into it as they were trying to grab something up there. I don't remember. But um, either way, I had to fill this in and I used the Elmer's wood filler and I really liked it because it does dry fast. It's paintable and sandable so you can get a nice smooth finish so you don't see that there were cracks anymore. And it did work really great. When I was finished, you could not tell where the big gouges were. And I applied this with a putty knife, which is how you're supposed to do it. Then you let it dry and then you sand it. And I like to use a sanding sponge. And I went in first with one that was pretty rough and then um, 
just to smooth it down and get it nice and smooth. And I think I did like a medium or rough grit for that. And just so you know, I started this outside, but we are in like crazy gnat season here. So I was getting all kinds of eaten up. So I don't have any video of me applying it. And I definitely applied it thicker than I should have because I was just trying to like get it done and get out of the bugs. But um, in the end, I, I did a lot of sanding and then I was able to really get it nice and smooth and prep for paint. Now with chalk paint, one of the benefits of it is you're not supposed to have to sand ahead of time. You can just go for it. Um, but I did go ahead and rough up the rest of the top as well, just because I had filled in so much that I wanted to make sure that I was kind of starting with an even um, prep work. So that way it would take the paint in the same manner. So because I used too much wood filler because I was getting attacked by gnats when I started this outside, I had a lot of sandy dust to remove. So I just took a nice wet paper towel and cleaned that off. You can also use some TSB, trisodium phosphate, that is specifically meant for cleaning off uh, surfaces and preparing them for paint. You would especially wanna use that if this surface is especially dirty, if it's been like in a garage for a while or um, you don't know the history or you're trying to paint something in your kitchen and there's grease stuff on it, you definitely want to use that because it really cleans everything off nice and uh, perhaps everything for paint, but you do want to make sure you use gloves and eye protection when you do that because it is a, it's not super strong, but you definitely don't want to get it on your skin or in your eyes. So once everything dried, I went over with everything with a tack cloth as well. This is a must have if you're doing any type of furniture redo and you have to sand because, or even if you're just cleaning it up. A tack cloth, it's really gooey and sticky. You almost have to use like Dawn dish soap to get the gooeyness off your hands. But what it does is it will wipe up all of the dust and debris and anything else that's left over on it. So especially in this one where I had so much extra dust hanging around, I wanna make sure I got all of that off and away so that way it didn't get caught in the paint and ruin the finish. So just by wiping that over all the areas that were impacted by the, the dusting, both on the top and the bottoms as it sort of fell down, I made sure I went over that. So you can see the area in the front where it had gotten all scratched up. And once I had gone over that with the wood filler and then the sandy sponge, it was you can still see where all the cracks were because they're now filled in by wood filler, but everything was very nice and smooth, which prepared it to have a great finish where you weren't even gonna be able to tell that there had been any damage to start with once it's painted. This wood filler really did a phenomenal job at filling in the cracks. Again, you can really see it when you are just looking at it before paint. And this is why I chose to paint it instead of staying the top because you would have still seen all of the imperfections if I would have chosen to just restain this a darker color, which was my original thought. But when I saw how truly messed up and scratched it had been over its years and years of use, I was like, you know what? We're just gonna paint this whole thing. We're gonna fill it in. It even filled in really well where the wood had kind of split apart a little bit where it had previously been fused and then over time it separated. So it really, you just can't even tell in the finished product because that wood filler did a great job of just filling in every little nick and um, imperfection in that piece. Next up, you wanna move any hardware that you don't wanna get paint on. And in this case, I thought originally I was gonna reuse the hardware because that can be an expensive part of the job to replace all of that. But, and so I just put it in a bucket and washed it with some warm soap and water to get sort of that gunk and grime off. Again, you could use some TSP on this as well, but make sure you use those hands and that eye protection. But you just wanna remove all that because then you have a nice smooth surface to paint on and you don't have to worry about, you know, getting on your hardware and then especially if you want to reuse it you, it's good you can clean it off and if you don't then you have a fresh surface to work with with whatever hardware you choose to replace it um, one note here you do want to keep it all together whether that's in a big tupperware bin or a bag because otherwise it's too easy to lose screws and things and that's not fun if you are going to change the size of the hole that you want and so like these were three and three and a half inches, depending on where they were at in the dresser unit, you would just plug one hole and then drill a new one. Ultimately, I decided to just get ones that would fit the original holes because then I didn't have to mess with any of that because I was worried that unless I made it much larger, that the holes would end up being not quite centered and then also would you know, be too weak 
by drilling too close to the original holes. All right, so once you have everything prepped, and that's almost the longest time is getting your piece prepped, but you wanna start with a good clean surface that's free of any dents or scuffs. Otherwise your finished job is just not gonna look as nice if you're looking for a nice smooth coat that really modernizes it. If you want more of a beat up, you know, farmhouse style rustic finish, then you don't have to spend as much time prepping other than to make it nice and clean. But I wanted that nice smooth finish, so I took a lot of time doing that. So I use, like I said, I was trying out the Magnolia Home by Joanna Gaines, and I also used their brush with this because I wanted to try that out too. Previously, I've only done chalk painting with the Annie Sloan brushes, and I just wanted to see the difference, see what I thought of them. Uh, I used the color Weekend. It's a really deep, like tealy green that I really liked. Uh, it looked real modern to me and I just loved it. And I, I bought like four cans of this, I had quarts of them. And at the time I was able to find it in like a Target store in Des Moines. And now they're the best place to get them is to go straight to the um, website, the Magnolia Home website that is run by Chip and Joanna Gaines. And again, not sponsored not affiliate links or anything, then just letting you know so that if you wanna give this a try, you can go and get what you want. They have a lot of colors to choose from, so you can really get, you don't have to go as, as dark as I did. But I wanted something that was going to be darker and really kind of stand out against those light gray walls. So for this piece, I wanted to try giving a roller a try to, to see if I could get a smoother finish with that. So when I started painting, I just did long smooth strokes on the edges that a roller wouldn't go over as well. So anything that was curvy or bumpy, I did that first with the brush and went over it in just those nice long strokes. And then any like, molding details, you know, these older pieces of furniture tend to have a lot of that where there's a lot of character to them. So anything that's molded or rounded or not perfectly smooth or flat, basically I went over that with the brush first. And the paint really did go a long way. I was able to do the entire bedroom set and that was a large um, chest of drawers and a large dresser, a large nightstand and the mirror. And I was able to do it all with the one coat of paint, or not one coat of paint, but one quart of paint. So it really did a great job. The coverage was great. It's always gonna be a little patchy the first coat you do over it. And that's normal with any type of paint, even chalk paint, but it didn't really take a whole lot. And it's a little bit of thicker paint too. And you can dilute that a little bit. Um, I didn't until the very end, but it worked out really well for me. One more thing about the brush. So I don't know that I loved or hated the brush. Um, I felt like it shed a lot. So I was always kind of pulling, whenever I would see loose bristles, I would just pull them out. So that way they wouldn't get stuck in the paint finish. I think I only found one in the final finish that got painted in and it's just gonna be there forever. Um, but it did do a good job of covering and coating it. Um, so. If you already have a bunch of brushes because you're an Annie Sloan fan, I don't think you need to get this brush, but if you don't have a good paint brush, I think this is a good one to get. So next I use a smooth roller to go over all of the smooth portions of the set. So that would include all of the tops, the sides, the drawer fronts. I went over every single smooth bit with that and I made sure to get a ruler that had a very smooth nap to it and I got one of the little mini ones including they're like four inches long and they have their own little rollers and own little trays to go with them and it's lovely because you don't end up wasting a ton of paint and they're very portable. You can move them from place to place as you're working around and getting to different areas. And again, I just did nice long smooth strokes trying to go across as far as I could and getting a nice smooth finish across that entire top. So in the end, hopefully it would dry and look like one nice smooth finish piece. So I was pretty happy with how the first coat laid down. It did get some pretty good coverage, especially with the roller. It wasn't as patchy as I would have thought it would. This is the first time I've used a roller with chalk paint, so I don't know how it would compare to say Annie Sloan or something else, but I really did appreciate the coverage. I thought it covered a lot better than it did with the brush. And I really was able to get that nice smooth look with it. And again, this was from the top half of the paint jar and I had not thinned anything yet. Um, we had a little bit different results, which I'll talk about a little bit later when I got to the bottom and everything was a little bit thicker. Um, but for that first coat, everything was great and perfect and lovely. And I just loved how the coverage went. And in this case, by the time I made it all the way around painting everything, the recommended dry time had already passed. So I was able to start the second coat right away. Obviously that wouldn't work if you were working on a smaller piece, but in this case, when I had an entire very large 
bedroom set to work with. Um, by the time I got around, it was ready to go and I could just start brushing uh, the second coat as well. So when I worked on the mirror, I did things a little bit differently. Um, normally I don't tape. I have a pretty steady hand over lots and lots of practice of cutting in without tape. But for this instance, I wanted to also be able to use that roller to get that nice smooth look because I really like the way that that turned out. And then I also wanted to be able to just brush around and not worry about it. So I took my painter's tape and I just did a line and I kind of like snugged it underneath where the, the lip was underneath the wood where it meets the mirror and covers that. And then I was able to just go through and paint over it with my brush first and then smooth everything out with a roller. I did add just a little bit of paint to the roller before I went over it, but I was able to get really great coverage. And I just did the top and the sides of the mirror because I figured it's gonna be against the wall. So I didn't really, fuss too much with getting in the back, but if you wanna be a perfectionist, you can do that back portion of the mirror as well. So this is a really fun tip. Um, I only bought one roller to go with this, and if you know that you're gonna be coming back to it the next day, you can just wrap that roller up in a plastic bag and then wrap the ends of the plastic bag around the edge of it, and that will seal the paint in and keep it wet. So that way you can still reuse that roller the next day without having any issues. So the lighting is not awesome at this point because it was pretty late the night when I was working on this and we just had this 1950s pink chandelier in our dining room where I was working and it's not the best light, but it's okay. So I talked about when I got to the bottom of that can, how things were getting a little thicker. And I don't know if it's because I bought the paint last fall and I finally got around to using it this summer, so like nine months later, or if that's just, I didn't stir it up enough, or if this is just how this paint is, I'll have to play with it some more to find out for sure. Um, but when it got to the bottom, that paint got a little thicker. And I had a lot of issues where it just wasn't as smooth. It looked a little bumpy and textured, which is not what I wanted. And at first I thought, oh, I'll just leave it, it's okay. But then I was like, no, I can't do it. This is my grandma's piece. I want it to be nice. So what I did was I took a fine sanding sponge and I didn't remove paint, I removed texture. So I went all over um, any areas where there was that raised texture on the drawer fronts and then a little bit on some of the tops of the pieces. And this only happened when I was like down to the bottom of the section of the paint. And once I added a little bit of water and stirred that up, it was fine. There were no more issues with it. Um, it went on, it glided just fine. And that's what I ultimately ended up covering this with. And this was, just so you know, it was with the roller on the first day. It wasn't the second day. So I did the entire bedroom set minus the mirror on day one. And then I did the first coat on the mirror on day one. Then I wrapped it up in that plastic and on day two, I finished the mirror. So I experienced this bumpiness on day one um, from that finish. And it was just from that paint getting a little bit thicker. So if that happens to you, you just need to add a little bit of water until the consistency gets a little bit better and it's going on smooth. Because if it runs on textured, it's gonna dry textured and it's not gonna look good. So again, I just took that sanding sponge and I just went over it back and forth lightly until I looked like a nice uniform color. Like it really was this uniform light tealy dusty look and it didn't take off the color but what it did do was just take it back to the point where it was nice and smooth and then I was able to apply a third coat after that. So obviously sanding everything created a lot of dust so I went over everything with a wet cloth and just real gently because again we haven't sealed this we haven't done any wax so I wanted it to just you know take off that dust and nothing else. And then I followed everything up with a tack cloth once it dried to just make sure I had all the dust away before I finished it with a little bit of paint. So I let everything dry overnight after I did that third coat to the areas where I had to sand it smooth uh, to get rid of that texture. And then I went over everything with a tack cloth again because I don't know about you guys, but my house is dusty. I got four pets, a kid and a husband and I'm messy and there's just, there's dust, there's dog hair, there's cat hair. There's just stuff in the air. So anything that sits for a little bit, I'm always gonna go over with a tack cloth before I do anything else to it. Then I was able to start applying the wax. 
I used the Magnolia Home Clear Wax, again, keeping with the theme of trying all the Joanna Gaines chalk paint and supplies with this. And I used the wax brush that they have for that as well. And I will say that I have used this before. I used it last winter to seal a job I did for my daughter's room. I did everything white and after uh, over a year, actually, it's been about a year and a half since I did it. It really has held up really well. So I can really speak to the quality of this wax. It's really good. The only areas where it's not good is like where a drawer got pulled out too far and it nicked all the way through to the wood grain. So that's just gonna have to be completely touched up or repaired. But it has worn very well. It's very easy to clean up and get all the dust and stuff off. And I just go over it with a damp cloth and, and it looks beautiful again. So I really do like this. And obviously kids, they're not you know careful with stuff. So, and it was a white finish. So it really does hold up well. And I really did like this product. It also went a really long way. I ordered two extra cans of wax because I only have a little bit left after doing her bedroom a year ago. And I was able to do this entire bedroom set with a little bit I had left from doing one other bedroom set and then just a few swirls from a new can. So I have almost two completely new cans to use here. One's totally new, one's just a little bit new. So this really goes a long way. Um, and I really do like this brush. I like the wax brush a lot. I feel like it's really easy to use and it's very affordable. I know sometimes any Sloan stuff isn't. And really by comparison, all of this chalk paint supplies are much more affordable than the Annie Sloan. And so that is a nice little benefit if you're on a budget, this is a good stuff to use and I think you're gonna like the results that you get from it. So what you wanna do is you just want to, if you're getting towards the bottom, you're gonna tap, tap, tap that brush into your wax and or if it's at the top, you can just swirl it around the top and you just wanna get a good amount of wax on the brush head, it's just gonna go a long way. The best way to describe this is it's like putting lotion on your hands. You put a little bit on and then you rub it all around until it all works in. And that's how you wanna apply wax to a piece. You put a little bit on the brush, you're gonna move it all the way across. I tend to go in nice smooth motions across. Again, the same way I would do paint strokes or going with a roller because that way I'm able to like really seal it in and minimize any brush strokes that might come in from the wax brush. And then you just wanna rub it in as good as you can. You can also go over it afterwards with a buffing cloth, which is just a lint-free cloth. So if you have like an old t-shirt, you can use that, but do be careful that you're not like getting any hairs in it. You can also buy packets of lint-free cloths, which are basically old t-shirts that don't have any hairs in them that you can use for that as well. So you can also apply it with the t-shirt. I've done that before. I think I did that with the white because there was just too many wax like hairs stuck in my wax brush. And it was just, it was not good. It was not going well with that white when I was using that, just cause like I said, there's too many animals in my home and hair is everywhere. It's just part of life. Um, but I didn't notice that with this darker color at all. It worked really well. Um, the other thing that I really like about the Magnolia Holmes brushes is they come with reusable packaging. So when you're done with it, you put your brush back in it and it helps it keeps its shape. And then it also is gonna help protect it from getting dust lint and hair and whatever else on it. So if you do live in a home like me where there is just no escaping the pet hair, you're gonna have a little bit of protection in making sure that that stays off of your brush in between uses. Cause especially with your wax brush, it can kind of just settle in there and that's a problem. So when you first apply the wax, it's almost gonna look like it's darkening up and that is gonna go closer to the color that it originally was once the wax hardens and dries. But you do wanna make sure that um, it might get a little bit darker in the end. So you have to be okay with that, even if you're using the clear wax. So as you can see, I've reinstalled some hardware. I went with a nickel finish here, a satin nickel finish, and I got it from two places. I got the smaller ones from Target, and then I got the bigger three and a half inch ones from Wayfair. They had a ton of different sizes. So if you need a size that is not readily available, that is the place to go, in my opinion. Again, not sponsored, no affiliate links. I just found what I needed there, so I want you guys to know where you can get it to. Um, I just made sure I got a similar style so that way they would look good together and the same finish. So that way when you're just looking at it as a whole, it looks like it all belongs together. Um, I also got this cool um, 
buffing attachment. And I think you guys have seen on some other ones, I've used a buffing brush in the past, but it's a lot of manual labor because you are manually going over that. And so, you know, you can get a nice cool sheen from it, but it's gonna take a long time to do it. So with this one, you attach it to your drill bit and then it does the work for you. And it went from kind of a matte finish to a nice sheen on it. And it really was very cool. And it was just so, so neat to watch. Like you could see like the, it brighten up as it went on there and it really made the wax feel like it was set and hard and like cured. And it isn't really cured yet. Like you still wanna wait a little bit of time before you put everything back together and you put some stuff on top of it because then you can get indentations in the paint and the wax. But it really made it look very nice. And it was so fast. I was able to buff this entire piece and the drawer fronts and everything super, super fast. One thing I wouldn't recommend is you have to make sure that I like was doing this as the drawers were already in and I did nick like one of the drawers with the end of the attachment because I had it out and so I got a little bit of gouge in there so I'll have to touch that up at some point um, but I really like this it was it was really cool to use and I really like the effects of it one more note about buffing um I waited actually two days to do the buffing because I had to wait for the part to come with Amazon Prime so you wanna at least wait like a day for the wax to kind of cure and harden before you do this, because otherwise it's just too sticky still to go over it and you won't really like the finish of it. So I just let that sit for a day and then I went over it um, actually two days later, but a day in between would be perfectly fine. What you don't wanna do is wait like a week because then you're not gonna see the same results. So overall, Annie Sloan versus Joanna Gaines, I feel like I had some issues with Joanna Gaines that I haven't had with Annie Sloan, um, mostly with the texture. So when I got down to that bottom of the paint can and everything felt a little stiffer and chunkier and like as I was pouring it out, it literally was like going so slow out of the can. And again, I don't know if I didn't stir that up enough or if it's just because I got it nine months ago and haven't used it until now. Um, but once I added water, it was fine, but I haven't had to do that with Annie Sloan and I've let stuff sit for a long time in between using it and it was still fine without any issues. So I don't know if that's a formula thing um, or if it was a user error thing. I'd have to use it more to know for sure. But just know that if it starts to get thick on there, you're gonna wanna add a little bit of water and then you will be able to thin that out a little bit. Also, I felt like the color wasn't super consistent throughout. And again, I don't know if that's because I had to do that sanding to smooth it out a little bit, if that lightened it, and then when I add a little bit of water, if that lightened it. Um, but for the most part, it looks really good. I really like it. It was a lot less expensive. The wax I really like, it really holds up very well um, over time, and I really like that. But, you know, it's a really good product. I like it. It's a little bit easier to get, comes in a lot of colors, and so you can get it and when they ship it to you, it ships super fast, just so super fast. Um, there's only the one place to get it, Annie Sloan, you have to find a stockist who has it. Um, but you know, it's, it's still cool. Um, as far as color charts go, I didn't really see a color chart on Joanna Gaines' website. I think that'd be cool to have to be able to purchase that that just had the chalk paint colors in it. I have one for Annie Sloan and I love it because I can look at it and see, yes, I like that color. Um, and I purchased that as well. It's not like a freebie that comes, but at least then you know that this is a color and you're not judging on your computer monitor or your own printer to accurately represent that. So that would be a cool thing to add. Otherwise you're just buying it and hoping that it's gonna work for what you're doing. And I did that, you know, I, I like collecting paint. I have a lot of it. And so it wasn't such a big deal to me to buy a bunch, but I know that if you are on a budget and you're not so sure if it's gonna work or not, that might be a hindrance. So cool stuff, I like it. I think it's gonna wear well over time because I know that that wax seals it really well. And I really do love how it, it looks in my bedroom now. I think it really modernized everything. It will make this really a great piece to continue to use for maybe another four years. So thanks so much for watching. We've got some other painting videos as well if you wanna check those out. 
like I said, we've got this hutch behind me. I painted a sewing cabinet white and you guys have loved that one. That actually is our most viewed video ever is me painting a cabinet white. Um, so that's fun. And somebody asked me already, do you think your grandma's gonna haunt you? And I'm like, no, I don't think so because I've already painted one of her sewing cabinets that I got and I think she would like it. She's the one who first taught me to sew. I sewed with her for the first time and I remember her, she didn't read in English or Italian. So I had an American Girl doll pattern and my like eight or nine year old self was just like wanting to follow the directions even then. I was like very inward attentive even as a child. And she's like, no, we do it this way because she just knew how. And she had done so many garments over the course of her life and, and she just, she knew. And I wish I would have had more time to spend with her and that this business would have grown into um, what it is today while she's still around to see it because I think she would think that's so cool. And no, I don't think she's gonna haunt me for painting her cabinet. I think she reused everything. When she passed away, my parents had gotten her brand new Christmas towels for Christmas like two years beforehand. She was still using towels that she had brought with from Italy because they were still there. They still soaked up water. Why use the new ones? So I'm sure she would be happy that I've reused something and made it my own and I'm continuing to use it. So thanks very much for following along. We've got a link of playlists below where you guys can see more painting videos. Let me know if you like it we can show you some more or if you wanna see, you know, my embarrassing collection of antique sewing machines and cabinets. It's, it's embarrassing. I literally don't know how many I have. It's bad, it's really bad. And so maybe someday we'll do that video on that. But let me know in the comments if you like it, if you wanna see more videos like this um, or what else you wanna see. Thanks so much for following along. Like and subscribe if you haven't done it already. And until next time, happy quilting.